So de extinction to us is you know, recreating these phenotypes. So a gray wolf is the closest living relative of a dire wolf. They're genetically really similar, 99.5% similar. And phenotypically, their, their morphology is also similar, only dire wolves are larger, more muscular, and have these light colored coats and other, other things that we can see from the fossils. And so we targeted DNA sequence variants that we believe lead to those traits. And then we edited gray wolf cells to contain those dire wolf DNA variants. And then we cloned those cells and created our dire wolves sort of looked at what we do with gray wolves. We beefed up the caloric values um, of the formula and we began putting them onto a, a puppy milk replacer or formula. And then quickly at by eight weeks, they were weaning and being fed um, uh, whole solid foods. So they're getting everything from ground meats like beef and deer and horse meats all the way to now they're actually experiencing uh, whole prey. So they get to sort of chew on meat and bones and all of that. And then, you know, as they develop, they start showing you hunting instincts and stalking instincts. Um, what they will probably never learn is, right, what is the finishing move of how you kill a giant elk or a, a you know, big deer, something like that. Um, those are sort of those finely tuned social learning opportunities that these guys won't have. So, yes, they have slightly genetically modified wolves, maybe. Um, and that's probably the best that you're gonna get. And those slight modifications, seem to have been derived from retrieved dire wolf material. Does that make it a dire wolf? No. Does it make a slightly modified gray wolf? Yes. <laughs> and that's probably about it. Where do you put them? I mean, this is one thing that seems to be completely lost on the de-extinction people is that, let's say that even you, you manage to bring back a sufficient number of mammoths or dire wolves to create a viable population. This is important because you need thousands of completely genetically diverse individuals in a population for having any chance of surviving in the future. The whole Adam and Eve concept that we create two and they can just go on and do their own thing. Now that's called inbreeding depression. And, <laughs> and then things die very quickly. You know, most introductions of most species fail over 99%. Why? Because there's a few individuals that inbreed themselves out of existence. And this is the same with respect to um, in, in humans, it happens in humans, it happens in mice, it happens in, in the smallest individuals. When you claim all these great big things and then you don't provide the associated evidence, especially in something as controversial as this, that is a massive red flag. It suggests that, well, at, at best, they've over-exaggerated. Uh, at worst, they're lying through their teeth.